begin. Uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of uh, a new age consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon is new age in the sense that we haven't taken the traditional consulting firm model. Traditional consulting firms hire a lot of consultants and then uh, put them on client projects. Our model is that we work with a lot of boutique consulting firms. So we have more than 300 boutique consulting firms, boutique agencies that collaborate with us in our ecosystem. And we uh, connect clients to these boutique firms. Um, we, you know, this model has allowed us to scale very quickly. Uh, so we started operations in 2017 and by the end of 2019, we had more than 500 consultants to choose from and we had delivered more than 200 consulting projects across the region. Um, now we have more than 5,000 consultants on board. Uh, but 2020, of course, was supposed to be a great year, right? For us, for everyone else, it was the turn of the decade, right? This was, this was the year everyone was really excited about, Expo 2020 as well, right? It was a year full of excitement. Obviously, it didn't turn out like that. Um, so what we decided to, uh, you know, once, once uh, you know, there was the lockdown and the, obviously the downturn had started, once we recovered from that initial shock, right, in March and April, what we decided to do was spend, and of course, we had excess capacity. So what we decided to do was use that excess capacity and 20% of our time, right, and uh, not just my time, but the time of all my colleagues uh, will be spent on helping things get back on track, right? So last year, we got about 700 business leaders from organizations across the GCC to try and help micro businesses and small businesses uh, to survive the downturn. It is a project called the Superheroes Project, which we continue to today. This year, what we decided was there's a lot of expertise within our firm, right? So these boutique consulting firms that work with us, they bring with them a lot of subject matter expertise, lots of industry expertise. So what we decided to do is with 70 of them, we decided to set up a seven day summit. It's called Connected Insights, which you're a part of now. This is day four of the Connected Insights Summit. And we're doing about 50, to, uh, 50 panel discussions and webinars and six workshops in this summit. Um, today's discussion is by Fidgetal now. Anita is with me. We've been working with Anita for about a year now. And I'm really looking forward to this. But just before I start a couple of housekeeping points, We've made you all panelists. So rather than normal attendees, like in a normal Zoom webinar, we've made you all panelists so that you can switch on your video, interact with the speaker, interact with each other during the discussion. However, please do stay on mute while, uh, while we are discussing. Whenever you have a question, if your video is on, you can use your actual hand. If you don't want to use your actual hand, you can use the raise hand feature in Zoom uh, so that you can ask a question. Uh, you can use the chat feature to ask a question. So that's one quick point. Uh, so do feel free to interact and ask questions during the discussion. I actually already see somebody raising their hand, probably by mistake. Uh, now, uh, we, um, uh, the second important point to, uh, to note is that we are doing a few giveaways in the chat. So keep an eye out for those. Giveaways like, uh, you know, we have about four workshops remaining during this discussion. These are paid workshops, about $299 per workshop, but we're giving away three invites. Uh, one is at four, 5 p.m. today after an hour. Uh, so we're giving away uh, invites for those if you're interested. All you need to do is fill that short form and we'll send you an invite. Um, we're also looking for speakers for the next edition of Connected Insights. So this is the first edition, but we're looking for the next, uh, for the next edition, we're looking for speakers. So again, at around uh, about after about 40 minutes, we'll paste that short form that you can complete to become a speaker in the next edition. So that's about it from me. Sorry for taking a little longer than I promised Anita. Uh, over to you to start this very interesting topic. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you, Varun. And good evening, all. Um, I hope you all had a good day and not too tired. Um, over the next 30 minutes, I'll be talking about the importance of strong brand signals in e-commerce. And at the end of the presentation, I'll also run 
a six question poll to collectively understand how much importance you are currently giving for branding in your e-commerce. And I saw, I heard from the introductions, some of you are already in the e-commerce business. So we can discuss at the end or during the presentation, any questions that you may have regarding the branding in e-commerce. So when we talk about e-commerce, the first thing that comes to our mind is the convenience. The convenience of shopping from anywhere, from any device that you own, literally shopping at your fingertips. And the other factor is the price, the attractive pricing that many of the aggregator sites like Amazon offers for any brand that you're looking for or for any products that you're searching for. But if you walk into a supermarket and the aisle looks like this, a collection of products without any brand names and perhaps only the pricing given, the shopping experience will not be satisfactory. In fact, it will be confusing. How are you going to choose one product or the over, over the other? Is it just the cheapest or the most expensive? And in fact, if you have shopped on Amazon or any aggregator sites, you might have experienced something similar to this. In fact, when you look at the top selling stores on Amazon in UAE or Saudi Arabia, you don't see your familiar brands. In UAE, what you see is Ugreen and Shift Electronics that are selling functional items like mobile chargers, or storage devices. And in Saudi, what you see are supermarket brands like New City 99, Family 7, that sell anything from perfumes to toys, but all price driven with hardly any information around the brands. But we do shop for lifestyle brands. All of us have, but they don't feature in the top 10. But e-commerce is not all about Amazon even though in a mature market like US, you have Amazon garnering about 40% of the retail sales share, while the rest is shared between the major retailers like Walmart and Home Depot. Even in our region, if you look at electronics, it is one of the highly traded categories online. And you will see that there are cross-border players like Amazon and regional players like Noon, but you also have omni-channel retailers that have both physical store and an online destination like Sharaf or plugins. Even other category like fast fashion, the same regional players as e-commerce pure players, but then you have many more omni-channel retailers like Sun & Sands or H&M. And even in luxury fashion, you have a luxury closet as a e-commerce pure player and level shoes with their store in uh, Dubai Mall, one of them. They, they, they are the omnichannel retailers in the luxury fashion. Now, what that means is that just like how an aisle without any branding can be confusing, even an aisle that looks like this with multiple brands offering similar products. How are you going to choose which brand? Unless of course, you have gone into the store, which usually you do with a brand already in mind. While that is what you do in the physical store, that is pretty much what should happen even in e-commerce. You should always have, you should try and have your brand as the pre-bias in your customers' minds. Because that is why the role and promise of the brand is crucial to stand out in the clutter. You want your customers to search for your brand by name, not as a product that they pick up either cheaper or more expensive, which is what is happening largely in e-commerce today. And you would have experienced that as a customer and those of you who are running an e-commerce platform 
will experience that the customers are primarily looking at price as a deciding factor. But the conversion journey is not all about checkout. Those of you who use Google Analytics must be familiar with this chart. It tells you how many people landed on your website, what pages did they start on, and how many interactions they had from that starting page. The first interaction, the second interaction, the third interaction, the stickiness of the website. That is very important. You want them to spend time on your website, browsing through the catalogs, looking at the product reviews. And the longer they stay, chances are the shopping cart becomes bigger. And more importantly, if they have a good experience on your website, they will return to again shop through the website. And you know that getting a customer, a returning customer, is far more valuable than and more less expensive than getting a new customer. Yet brands and marketplaces focus on what we call the bottom of the funnel from conversion to loyalty to advocacy, but mainly on conversion. And then they spend a little on loyalty and expecting that the advocacy will happen after that. But it really does so. The brands need to work through the funnel from awareness to advocacy. Only then will you be able to have that pre-bias in your customer's mind towards your brand. So that when they come into the, when they are searching for brands or when they are searching for products, they already know that this is the brand that they want to pick up. Much like how you walk into a supermarket with a brand in mind. For example, if you're looking for a running pair of running shoes and the usually the results that come up on your results or on your search results will be the big brands. But if you're a smaller brand, but offering a quality product, unless you invest in brand building, so, so chances are that they will still buy the bigger brand, even at a higher cost. This is why even Amazon that continuously um, encourages people to be aggressive in their pricing still insist on full funnel strategy for the advertisers. Because what they say is that according to the insights published by Amazon, a full funnel advertiser that uses both brand building advertising options that Amazon offers and conversion oriented advertising options, the one that uses both a healthy mix of both has much higher month over month sales growth almost double. And even the consideration stage, they have they get much better detailed page views so that the add to cart actions are higher for the ones that are using the full funnel strategy. But the most important factor is a full funnel strategy advertiser gets much higher new to brand sales, a new customer, that is important to grow your brand. And that is what a full funnel strategy advertiser gets more than the modified full funnel strategy. Those who use only part of the advertising options that Amazon offers. Now this is according to their insight. So how do you build a brand image for e-commerce? Building a brand image is a time and resource intensive process. And in e-commerce, where the purchase decisions are made instantly, the importance of having what I mentioned, the positive bias towards your brand, even before they visit any of the e-commerce platforms is important. There are multiple ways to build this brand image. And the ones that I've highlighted here are just four ways, but they have been proven effective. Let's start with social proofing. Now, this is something that has been commonly used across brands, small or big. You invest in a couple of social pages like Facebook, 
page or an Instagram handle, and you give your customers a platform to share their views or to like your brand updates because people love buying what others love. Now, the, the next way of building a brand image, which is keeping up with the trends, that can be pretty tricky because not all trends are applicable to all brands. One of the recent examples is the Bernie Sanders meme that you might have seen after Joe Biden's inauguration. For some reason, him sitting on a chair with the mittens caught the internet's attention. And many brands took on that trend. But to me, IKEA stood out because they use a similar chair to showcase one of their products. And instead of mittens, they use the oven gloves. Yes, it was funny, topical, and instantly viral. But the, one of the most important ways of building a brand image is offering a better customer experience. You can spend millions or hundreds of thousands building a brand image, but if they land up on your website and they do not have a good shopping experience, you have lost that customer forever. And to bring back that customer, I spoke about returning customer, how valuable they are, but to bring back a lost customer, it costs a lot more money, which is why this particular step of building a brand image is non-negotiable. But how do you offer them a better customer experience? It is by understanding the customers better. You know the customer expectations change over time. And how do you keep up with those changing customer expectations? This is by listening to what the, the customers have to say. And social media today offers many opportunities to do that. There are many tools in the market that allow you to monitor, analyze what the customers are saying, what are their sentiments, is it positive, is it negative? It can even, you, the same tools will allow you to re respond to them in their, in the, in, with the same platform. And that is how you understand the customer better because you will realize that you sell more when you listen more. While these are all external ways of building a brand image, there is an internal process that needs to be done before all this. And it starts with understanding the whys. Now, those of you who are familiar with Simon Sinek, he has been propagating the why behind a brand for a long time. However, the why that I'm talking about here is concerning the customer journey. In e-commerce, this customer journey can be, as I mentioned earlier, instantaneous. They get onto the website, they search for the products, and they immediately make that decision whether to buy or not. It is a mix of buy me now or wow me now, ease of discovery or joy of discovery. It's a combination of both. Ease of discovery are functional practical steps, offering them an intuitive navigation, making it easier for them to move from one page to the other or from one catalog to the other or from one product to the other, and then offering them a seamless checkout from the time they add to cart to the payment gateways that you offer. And then of course, the trust signals, how you allow them to share their reviews of your products, how you allow them to read others' reviews of your products, and also post-sales guarantees and warranties. These are all trust signals that they look for when they come to your website. Joy of discovery, on the other hand, is actually making your customer perceive your brand as an extension of the values that they, of, they possess. Now, how is that possible? It cannot be done in a propaganda way. It has to be done credibly, with credibility. One brand that seems to have done it really well and continues to do, the, do that is Apple. If you look at the way they 
rally behind the customer, their customers' values, whether in the stance that they've taken on data privacy, you know that they make the customers feel that they're part of a, an exclusive club. The other factor in joy of discovery is the feel good factor that your brand can offer the clients more than just the feel good factor of owning the brand or using the brand. Again, if I have to give you an example, Tom's, the shoe brand, you know when you buy a pair of shoes, you're donating, you're part, part of their social program of them donating another pair of shoes as well. So you feel that you're doing something beyond just sell. The third factor, the care signals, this has to be done very carefully because again, it shouldn't come across as hollow. They need to feel that you really care for the customers. One brand that does, again, as an example, is Dove Soap, which talks about body positivity, inclusiveness. Now, all these brands that I've spoken about just now, these are all multi-million dollar brands. But even as smaller brands, you can find your ways of extending the joy of discovery. It could be a simple virtual charity box on your website or a green counter that talks about the eco-friendly steps that you're doing as a business. And you can then communicate this and build a community around it. When you do break down the whys in this manner, what you are doing is building the first block of towards building a brand image. And around that, the customer journey. Because a well-developed customer journey allows you to target customers at the right time with the right message. And with that, you are able to take on the vast e-commerce market out there. If there, is, if there are any questions on the customer journey or the joy of discovery or esoteric that I've just spoken about, um, you can ask now or have a, have a chat window open. Kanika, is there anything? Um, if anyone has any questions, you can uh, raise your hand and unmute yourself. Okay, I'll continue. Now the e-commerce in, in this region and in the mature markets is slightly different. Globally, there is a gradual shift to high value items. We are used to buying electronic items or low value items or functional items or small brands, fashion brands online. But in US, the population under 28, they are buying homes using internet. 76% of them or 80% of them have found a home to buy, not to rent, on the internet. And I saw, uh, I heard in the introduction, someone with a gain app uh, that uh, talked about a real estate uh, fa facilitating app. Now, these are trends that are picking up in this region, which, which we will be talking about later in the session, if he has any questions to ask. And in, even in terms of automobile, in UK, the G4 data says that they sold 200 for 30,000 cars in 2020 worth over 500 million pounds from just 2,000 a year before. But in UAE, these categories are still developing. What is dominating are the utilities categories. If you look at the graph here, UAE is performing 30% higher when it comes to government services and education services delivered through internet. Now, that's not surprising, considering the amount of um, progress that the UAE government has taken in terms of digitizing the government services. Similarly, UAE is performing 16% better than emerging markets 
and 25% better than mature markets in telecom and utilities. But other sectors like retail goods and apparel and accessories, we are lagging behind mature markets and in, in some cases, emerging markets as well, but not for long. Why is that? Because in UAE, if you look at the average transactional value compared to both mature and emerging markets, we are at a much higher level. In fact, twice that of mature markets and three times that of emerging markets. Now that is a huge opportunity out there to tap into by the retailers. And the time is now because currently we have about 80%, over 80%, who trust the online payment systems. And even a basic category like e-groceries is valued at 200 million in GCC and Egypt. And overall, Middle East e-commerce category is valued at 69 billion. And the government has long-term vision for this category. One of the negatives or the setbacks of e-commerce industry is the amount of packaging that it uses, which is why when you look at a number like 1.5 billion for the corrugated packaging, you know the government is taking initiatives to meet the demands of eco-aware customers. And as government, but I, my, what I mentioned earlier, they are going paperless across all the de uh, departments. And there are multiple interest groups working towards reducing carbon footprint. So the region and this market, especially UAE, has a long-term vision for this industry. But you need to choose what works best for you. Is it a marketplace or a brand-owned e-commerce system? A marketplace allows you to enter the market without much infrastructure investments. But it is an algorithm controlled environment. You won't know why your brand is selling more on the marketplace like Amazon, or why your competition is selling more, because it's a walled garden data. They don't share much insights about what's happening inside their ecosystem with the sellers on the platform. And because it is pricing driven, marketplaces push the brands to focus on aggressive pricing, which make brands in turn focus on conversions. But when you have your own e-commerce platform, what you own is your customer's data. You have full visibility as to what the customers are doing on your website. You can offer them a holistic experience about your brand, and you can focus on engagement rather than conversion. And there in turn, you are able to focus on the brand image. An example that I can give you is the way you we buy airline tickets. You can go to Expedia and buy the cheapest website and buy the ticket. And those of us who have done that, we know that experience on Emirates airline website is completely different. It's all to do with the brand. You learn more about the destinations or perhaps look at what Skywards features are and join the Skywards program or understand more about Emirates airline as a brand. And that is what a brand owned ecosystem allows you to do versus a marketplace which is run by an external third party. But choosing what works for you and how you should play on each of these um, options is not easy, which is why when we founded Digital Now, as um, Varun mentioned in the beginning, it was founded about a year ago, right in the midst of COVID, we felt there was a need in the market to offer this advice. Many businesses had to change their business model quickly and adapt into digital channels just to stay 
relevant in the market. We de developed, therefore, a proprietary business framework called CART, stands for Customer, Architecture, Reach, and Transact, to help make that choice for the customers in a structured manner. It starts with customer, and here we orient your business towards customers using data, using analysis of products, of supply, supply chain. And we are able to then reorganize the product portfolio so that you are able to have the right product profiled against the right customer segment, which allows you to have a architecture that is, and that is used for enhancing the user experience and advancing the digital maturity by choosing the right platforms, the right technologies, according to the scope and scale of your business. So we will make sure that we, we do not give you a, a technology that might be too far, far uh, not, that might not be suitable for your current business environment. And with that, you're able to reach your audience with the right investments and have the right return on investment with the channels that you use to reach the audience. We will be able to develop a communication framework that is based on the customer journey that we spoke about earlier so that you're able to reach the audience at the right time with the right message. So that eventually you can uplift your revenue potential and ensure your business continues to remain profitable with the changing dynamics. Before I conclude my presentation, a little bit about myself. I've been in the industry for 30 years, from starting from India, and I have handled some of the brands that you see here, Wrigley's, or Lee in India, Emirates Airline. We launched the first ever Abaya shampoo in this market, personal Abaya shampoo. What I found is that the rigor that I have used to handle these global and regional brands is the same rigor that I need to use to handle even a smaller brand. And with that, we as a company chose three values on time, we'll always provide timely advice and act on that advice to achieve maximum impact amongst your customers. On target, we will always stay on target meeting measurable business targets through data-driven strategies. And on, 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 on purpose, that is a collective con commitment to deliver results with transparency and integrity. And as a concluding offer from Fitchtel now, I would like to offer you a free customer journey consultation so that you can start your Fitchtel now journey or a Fitchtel journey. You can write to at anita at fitchtelnow.com or reach out to me over LinkedIn. If you have any questions right now, you can ask or I will launch the poll to collectively understand, as I mentioned in the beginning, how you are using your e-commerce platforms currently. Hi, Anita, this is Nikhil here. I have a quick yeah. question. Um, yes. Uh, currently, like I already said, I think I've just started a new e-commerce website. And yes, we are also collecting data and all, but we are struggling with uh, the data is very unpredictable. The, the traffic is very unpredictable. How do we fix that? You know, what, what do you suggest? How are you collecting your data? Uh, right now we're using Zoho and Google Analytics. Yes, okay. And have you done some kind of a tagging on your Google Analytics to make sure that you have defined what goals that you want to achieve through your business? What yeah. events that you are monitoring? We did that. Uh, the The issue is that I think if, if I give you an example, like uh, let's like see, um, uh, through our uh, search, maybe around thirty four percent of 
traffic is coming and direct is somewhere around 40%, social media is around 6%. Okay. It will keep changing, you know, next month. Like when we track it again for the next month, that it's very like, that's a reason I think it's very unpredictable. There yes. No I, I think what you might want to do is have a look at the tags that you have installed on your Google Analytics account okay. and make sure that it is firing properly. You know, the that when the when the campaigns are on or when the pages are loaded, that it is firing properly. Because sometimes what happens is if it is not set properly, it does not collect the data properly. Okay, got you, thank you. Anyone else? Hi, Anita, this is Richa. Yes. So I, uh, I have a platform uh, with youth on environmental sustainability and I'm mm -hmm. in the midst of uh, discussing various options of setting up an e-commerce platform, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, there's always a confusion on the starting point, you know, uh, uh, in terms of should you be going with a proper full-fledged platform versus, uh, you know, these various options that are available online and you can just link it to your website and go ahead with it. So any tips from a starting perspective, what one needs to look into? Yes. So as I mentioned it, you know, that is the trickiest choice to make. Should you invest in your own e-commerce platform? Or should you take the marketplaces out there and get on with it? The, the first question that you need to ask yourself is that, what is the scope and scale of your business? If you are looking at expanding your business from a, you know, a, a single product, if it is a sustainability product, to a multiple product, then it makes sense to invest in a uh, uh, your own e-commerce platform. However, if you're only focusing on a couple of products and then it is okay to start off with an you know, aggregator site like Amazon and see how the traction is for those two products and then see whether it does make sense to invest in your own platform. So the idea is to say, what is the scope and scale of your business model in the beginning. Your Anita, remember we had a discussion about this about a year back, uh, right? Uh, yes. It's around Shopify, right? Because when I yes. built my e-commerce store, right? Uh, yeah. I just built it on Shopify. See, I've tried both, okay? With Shopify, I was able to build it over one weekend, right? Load yeah. all the products, etc. Because I had everything, right? Yeah. It was ready, but then I left it and I didn't say anything. That's a different matter. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, whenever I try to build it with a partner, they take like a month, month and a half to even put everything together. You know, it's more expensive, et cetera. So, you know, isn't it a much better idea to go for something like Shopify if it's a, something simple that you're selling? That, that's what I said. The scope and scale, that is what decides whether you should go on a marketplace or your own platform. If your scale and your vision for the business is much larger and you know, it has uh, multiple products and it has a, a, a larger outreach, then it does make sense to spend that time and efforts and the money to build your own platform. Because once you're on the marketplace, you do not have any control as to what is happening in the marketplace with your customers. They own the data. However, when you, if you have only one or two products and you do not have the, the, the means to invest in infrastructure, then as you rightly said, Varun, it is e very quick to market. You're able to enter the market over the, over the weekend and start seeing the results immediately because they, you start selling the products on that on the basis of the volume of traffic that these aggregator sites get. So you need to really figure out what is that model, business model that you want to eventually go with. And Anita, uh, an account, another question to that would be how easy is the transition then say if you start with smaller products and you work with a Shopify or another marketplace and then you decide, okay, you can go into your own uh, e-commerce platform. In terms of you know the data, the customers, the product categories you've got, the transition, how does that work? Yes, so when you are on Shopify or Amazon, as I mentioned, one thing that you do not see or get is what your customers are like. Why are they buying your product? Who are they? they, they you don't get that information. 
So what you need to do is you need to then start building some kind of a customer data, either through when you are fulfilling those orders, maybe you have to collect some data from that and then see whether those customers are worthy enough or valuable enough. For example, if your product is selling at, let's say, hundreds or two hundreds, then it really does not make sense unless you have a large volume to have your own website. But if you have a large volume of products and a large variety of products, then while you start off with a Shopify and an Amazon and build that build that traction for your brand and for your products. And again, uh, Amazon itself is talking about branding first and not just selling, not just pricing. So once you build that brand, then you know that there is some uh, uh, potential out there for you to start building your own e-commerce platform. Now, e-commerce platform, when I say, yes, it does take time and for a good good navigation and, a, and a, a good experience, uh, it does not come cheap. The platform, the development does not come cheap, though you can build a website for as little as 1,000 dirhams, but you don't get the experience. So if you, once you have figured out what is that traction that you're getting on Amazon and what is the volume that you're getting and what's the value that you're getting from your customers, then you are able to make that decision perhaps a year after you start with the Amazon or Shopify. Does thank that make sense? Yes, yes, thank you very much. Anyone else? So we need okay. to do two things, Anita. We need to do your poll and we need to do a photo with everyone. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, whichever you want to do first. Yeah, the poll. Um, Ma'am, I have a question. That how is market affair, how is e-commerce affecting after COVID-19? Uh, the e-commerce, what you saw, in fact, one of the numbers that I just put up, $200 million um, for just groceries in uh, GCC and Egypt. That should tell you what how COVID has affected e-commerce. In fact, uh, there have been many reports that are talking about 4%, 8% growth just because of COVID in the region. I'm talking about just GCC, 4% additional growth and 8% additional growth over the next two, three years. Okay, Anita, just, thank you. Sorry, Anita, one more question. Uh, just, just need your feedback uh, because Varun uh, raised this Shopify talk. So, uh, I also started with Shopify, but I changed it because uh, there was a lack of customization because we do uh, eco-friendly clothing. So I was not able to, was it the right choice? Because now we, we built our website on WordPress. Yeah, it, it is, it is. I, and that's exactly the, the difference between a marketplace and your own platform. Because on your own platform, you are able to customize it. You're able to understand your customers better so that you're able to offer them better products, better experience. While on Amazon, it is all driven by their own algorithmic way of uh, working through products. And which is why sometimes you don't know why your brand is being pushed down or pushed up, both, it can happen. Okay, thank you. So Kanika, if you can, um, launch the poll, maybe we can collectively understand where we stand as a, in, in, in terms of e-commerce amongst all the attendees. So these are just six basic questions uh, to understand your current e-commerce uh, status. So the first one is how much of your current business revenue is e-commerce driven? The sliding scale is from zero to over 50%. How long do they have, Kanika, to answer? You can take a, about a minute because yep. there are six questions. Yeah. And what share of your e-commerce revenue is marketplace driven like Amazon? And how much focus do you put behind branding in your marketing strategies or marketing messages? 
And have you developed a communication framework based on the customer journey? And have you collected insights of your customer journey? And of course, what is the average annual marketing investments? Again, a sliding scale from under 10,000 to over 500,000. Uh, hi, Miss Anita. This is Praveen here. Yes. Uh, sorry, I uh, because I was driving, I could not participate uh, in the question and answer session. I just okay. have a question. Just wanted yes. to. Ask. I'm interested in getting into the drop shipping business. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in UAE, so I just want to ask you how. Um, uh, I, I my actual question is like drop shipping. How feasible is it? Like, is it a sustainable uh, business model? Like, uh, can it? Is it a long lasting thing or is it just an initial point, starting point, and then we create a brand? How is it like? I, I'm still new to this uh, entire uh, drop shipping world. So I just wanted to have uh, yeah. your points about it. Okay. So, I mean, drop shipping is a trend that is picking up uh, across, across the markets. And the reason yeah. why is that it allows the retailers, especially the smaller retailers, to save on the infrastructure cost because you you know they don't have to stock the products with their overheads and this also allows especially the smaller retailers you know a partnership in the last mile delivery because oh. most of the times what really affects the their profit margins is the amount of the share that they have to give for the delivery so okay. if you have, a, if they partner with a company like yours, then you take care of the storage facility and okay. the delivery facility. So it okay. is a sustainable model. And I think it is, it, it, I mean, it is gaining traction. I have some numbers uh, uh, that I've read that there, there is a good pickup for that across the markets. Okay. And again, uh, much more in the, the mature markets, but here also it is picking up. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to end poll and share the results with everybody. Yep. Yep. So is that the results? Kanika? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So what you have for the first, uh, I think there were just half of you who have uh, uh, sort of uh, participated in it. So you have about four of you 36% that has no e-commerce business at all. And while just to 18% over 50% of e-commerce revenue. And of which all of them are Amazon driven, not surprising. And uh, well, except for 27% who has more than 50% behind branding. The others are between 10% and 10, 10 and 20%, which is, again, as you saw, the importance of branding is not high enough because in e-commerce, when the decisions are made instantly at the platform, unless they come in with a pre-bias towards your brand, it's highly likely that they will go with the more familiar ones who have spent time and efforts to build through the funnel from awareness to advocacy. And have you a, a, a equal between no and yes of a communication framework? But this is most important, even in e-commerce, because you need to reach the right audience with the right message. Otherwise you will not be able to convert them even because the conversion journey is not just about giving them an, a, a seamless checkout process. And have you collected insights? Well, the reason why there is no communication framework is because there, is, there are no insights about the customer journey. So which is why I have an offer for a free consultation of the customer's journey. And what is your average marketing investments? Okay. 
that uh, if I mean I mean when you when it is under ten thousand over the annual uh, marketing investments, then you know that it might be more conversion oriented and sales oriented messaging rather than branding messaging. So you might have to rethink whether it does make sense. Does it make sense to invest more behind brand? Because you just saw that even in e-commerce, whether it is conversion oriented or not, the branding is important. So that's uh, what I have today. And if you want to continue the conversation, you can reach out to me, as I said, at my, at my email address or over LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Anita, for this uh, wonderful session. And thank you, everybody, for participating and asking your questions. Uh, before we drop off, I think we can click a quick picture. Uh, if everyone can turn on their video, if possible. Um, yeah, I see Nikhil has switched on his video. Mercy. Thank you all for joining. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, at the count of three, let's uh, all say e-commerce and click a picture. <laughs> <laughs> three, two, one, e-commerce. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thanks thank for joining. You. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Have a good day. You too. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.